blistering heart of the desert, a peculiar shadow moves among the cacti. Short, squat, and bristling with wiry fur, it shuffles forward, snout twitching, tusks gleaming faintly in the sunlight. To the untrained eye, this is just a wild pig, a feral hog, a porker on the prowl. But, ah, here lies the delicious twist. It isn't a pig at all. This creature is the collared peccary, Pecari Tejasu, better known to Spanish speakers as the Javelina. And what a misunderstood beast it is. Feared for its smell, maligned for its garden raids, mistaken for an invader, when in fact, the Javelina is the desert's own scrappy native, with a family tree far more ancient than the pigs it so resembles. Today, we're lifting the desert veil on this musk-scented mystery. Prepare to discover their strange society, their cactus-crunching diets, their run-ins with predators, and yes, the truth about their lineage. Spoiler alert, it involves millions of years of evolutionary drama. So buckle up, dear viewer. The desert may look silent and still, but in the world of the Javelina, life is anything but boring. The Great Misunderstanding. If you've ever driven through the American Southwest and spotted one of these beasts scurrying across the road, chances are you thought, oh, look, a wild pig. But let's get one thing clear from the start. Javelinas are not pigs. They may grunt, they may root, they may look like bacon with legs. But scientifically speaking, they belong to a completely different family. Pigs, those domestic porkers and their feral descendants, are members of the Suidae family. Javelinas, meanwhile, are card-carrying members of the Taya Suidae family. Two families separated by tens of millions of years of evolution. Imagine a family reunion where two cousins show up wearing the same outfit, but then someone checks the family tree and realizes, oops, they're not cousins at all. They're from entirely different branches, distantly related, but separated by continents and epochs. So yes, pigs and javelinas do share a common ancestor, but that ancestor walked the earth about 30 million years ago. Since then, pigs went one way, towards Europe, Asia, and eventually into our breakfast plates, and peccaries went another, towards the lush forests of South America, before spilling northward into the deserts of Mexico and the US. Now let's look at the differences more closely. The javelina, smaller, usually no more than 20 kilos, a salt and pepper coat, bristly and rough, and this snazzy white band of fur around the shoulders, the collar that gives it the name collared peccary. Its tusks, short, straight, and pointing downward, like daggers that never quite got the memo on flair. Now the feral hog, heavier, chunkier, sometimes a full 200 kilos. No neat white collar, tusks that curl like scimitars, a long tail ending in a little tuft. In short, if the feral hog is the overgrown bruiser crashing the party, the javelina is the scrappy little neighbor with a strong personality and a very strong smell. Life in the herd. One of the most endearing, and let's be honest, entertaining, things about javelinas is their social life. Unlike pigs, which can be content as loners or small groups, javelinas are all about community. They live in herds or squadrons, ranging from six to 20 individuals, sometimes even more. Within these groups, every day is a mix of affection, squabbles, and an awful lot of sniffing. Cue footage, a herd resting in shade, rubbing against one another. They bond using their scent glands, rubbing their musky perfume on rocks, on trees, on each other. To us, the smell is somewhere between skunk and unwashed gym socks. To them, it's home. It says, I'm me, your family, and that bush over there, ours. And they don't just smell, they chatter. Javelinas communicate with a surprising range of sounds, grunts, squeals, woofs, even the gnashing of their tusks. To human ears, it might sound like chaos. To them, it's dinner plans, warnings, or just a noisy argument about who gets the shadiest spot under the mesquite tree. 
Think of a herd of javelinas as a desert neighborhood. Every member has a role. They forage together, sleep in cozy piles to keep warm, and face danger as a unit. And like any neighborhood, there's gossip, squabbles, and the occasional dramatic exit. Diet and daily routine. The desert is not kind to picky eaters. Luckily, javelinas are anything but. Their favorite dish? The prickly pear cactus, spines and all. Close up, a javelina chomping into a cactus pad, spines disappearing into its mouth. Most animals would think twice before biting into a plant bristling with spikes. Not the javelina. Those tough lips and specialized mouths crunch through spines like celery. For them, it's hydration, nutrition, and roughage all rolled into one. But their menu doesn't stop there. Fruits, mesquite beans, agave roots, insects, the odd lizard. If it can be rooted up or chewed, it's fair game. Their ability to eat cactus makes them masters of desert survival. While other animals desperately seek scarce water, javelinas sip their fluid straight from juicy cactus pads. Efficient, if a bit painful looking. But remember, the javelina's family isn't confined to deserts. Its peccary cousins, like the white-lipped peccary, Tayasu peccari, and the Chacoan peccary, Catagonus wagneri, roam rainforests and scrublands. These relatives dig, forage, and play equally vital roles in their ecosystems, scattering seeds, turning soil, shaping forests. So whether in the rainforest or the desert, peccaries are nature's unassuming gardeners, busily reshaping their world one cactus pad at a time. Threats and challenges. Of course, life in the desert is never simple. For all their toughness, javelinas face dangers from every side. From above and behind, predators lurk. Mountain lions prowl the rocky slopes, patient and silent. Jaguars, where they still roam, ambush from shadows. Even coyotes will test their luck against young or isolated peccaries. Cue tense footage, a mountain lion stalking. But predators are only part of the story. The greater threat often comes on four wheels. Roadways cut across javelina territory and herds frequently meet their end beneath headlights. Add to this habitat loss, hunting, and disease, rabies, foot and mouth, and more. And the javelina's life becomes a daily gamble. And then there's us, humans. When a herd raids a garden or rummages through rubbish, the reaction is often swift and brutal. A creature simply trying to survive in the only way it knows is branded a pest. Conservation and misconceptions. So let's set the record straight. Javelinas are not invasive pigs. They are natives, survivors whose ancestors have walked this land since long before highways, cattle ranches, or fences existed. Their role in the ecosystem is far from trivial. They disperse seeds, aerate the soil, and provide food for predators. They are, in ecological terms, a keystone species. Small, yes, but essential. Some populations do thrive, particularly in protected desert parks, but others are under pressure. And as urban sprawl grows, so too does the misunderstanding between humans and these scrappy desert dwellers. The most important conservation tool is knowledge. Knowing how to distinguish a true feral pig from a native peccary. Recognizing the javelina as a rightful heir of this land, not an invader. After all, you wouldn't throw your neighbor out of the neighborhood just because they smell a bit odd, would you? Cue sunset shot. Herds silhouetted against fiery sky. Cactus flowers blooming around them. The javelina, small. Scrappy, musk-scented. A creature that straddles myth and misunderstanding. It may look like a pig. It may sound like a pig. It may even smell worse than a pig. But it is something entirely its own. A relic of ancient South America. A desert survivor. A heartbeat hidden among the thorns. So the next time you hear a rustle in the cactus, a grunt in the twilight, remember, it might not be a pig at all. 
it might be the desert's most misunderstood neighbor, the javelina. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more wild adventures. And if you'd like to dive deeper, you'll find references and further reading linked in the description. Until next time, stay curious and keep your nose to the wind, though perhaps not too close to a javelina.